Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee with the Captain. Uh, we have Captain Jan Miles here in front of the camera, and myself, Chief Mate Jeff Crosby, behind the camera. And uh, Captain Miles, where are we, and why are we here? Well, if you pan the camera around, it's not even possible to describe. <laughs> But we know, due to our modern world of uh, technology, that we're anchored off the uh, western side of Eastern Neck on the eastern shore of the Chesapeake Bay, a little distance south of Rock Hall, somewhat near the entrance of the river, Chester River. So uh, the wind has been uh, easterly for the last day or so, so it was, uh, and it's relatively little current here, bay current here, so it's quite pleasant. We're less than a quarter mile from shore, so that shows you how our visibility is. And we're out here doing this because we're sick and tired of maintenance. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's, yeah. And it's a little early in the season. Uh, you know, uh, all of our uh, viewers know that we get started early so that we can show the boat off to Marylanders and our state legislature and the governor uh, for Maryland Day, which is uh, <coughs> in middle third week of March. So uh, we're not into our business yet, but there's plenty to do on the boat. And we're taking a break from that work stuck at a dock day after day to uh, get out and we're just having a little bit of bad luck not a decent breeze but it's a breeze to go sailing with and uh, it's a good process for getting the crew familiar acquainted and more involved more aware of all the subtleties that this complex rig provides so uh, it's uh, a little disappointing from a uh, condition point of view but other than that it's better doing this than maintenance yeah it gives us great opportunity to, to get <laughs> things set and struck um, so here we are at anchor what's our next move today so we're going to go through the <clears throat> regimen of sailing away from the anchor mm -hmm. and we have a desirable direction to pay off on so uh, it's hard to tell for the viewer, but uh, with the wind coming off the land and the bay more or less behind us, um, we're going to want to pay off on a starboard tack and reach away from shore. So there's uh, <clears throat> a matter of uh, getting things set up prior to hauling back the anchor. Um, and when there's that timing between lifting the anchor off the bottom and starting to drift uh, with the mainsail set and the main top set we need to start setting sail up forward right away so that she doesn't tack and go the wrong the des undesired direction everything's moving so slowly so whatever happens we're going to have plenty of time to deal with it but what we want to do is pay off on a starboard tack so that means taking a head full setting it back it means having the yards are back even though the topsail's not set so uh, <clears throat> That's uh, a, a, a sort of a setup process for then, once we start hauling back, it's a relatively moderate pace hauling back. There's no hurry, but then once the, the anchor starts to come off the bottom, then there's a fair amount of scrambling going on. Yeah, scramble, 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 set, set, set. Uh, so I'm gonna pan the camera behind me here. So we already have the main set and the main gaff topsail, which you can see all the way up there. Uh, talk a little bit about that strategy. Why is that the, the first to stitch on before we even start hauling back the hook? Well, actually, we're not doing ourselves any favors. If the wind is coming off the land and we want to go away from the land, we shouldn't be setting any mainsail. Mm. We just haul the hook and let her turn around on her own windage and then start setting sail. But we're in a, enough space and enough room, we're not in a tight scenario, so we can go ahead and get the work of the mainsail set, work of the topsail, main top, gaff topsail set, and we have the room with which to do that maneuver I described earlier, where, where, where once the anchor starts to come off the bottom, we'll have headsails going up back. We're going to shift the main boom a little bit with the quarter cable so that it 
it's off to one side to help with the business of the orienting of the vessel because she's gonna going to act like a barn uh, window actually mm. a wind vane uh, wind vane until such time as we get enough windage up forward to combat that and uh, and so um, with a topsail yards aback and a headsail aback going being set aback then there'll be a certain amount of sort of balance uh, off to the starboard tack while the anchor is coming to the forefoot or the near the water uh, line. And <clears throat> with that being done, whether we set the topsail aback, square topsail back, or we brace around and then set is a matter of how things are evolving. Mm -hmm. So we have a bit of flexibility there, uh, and that's all in reaction to what the boat's doing, right? Right, and when it comes to the head soles, because of the tackle that needs to be used to bring the anchor up to the rail is on the port side to support anchor, the burden, the anchor burden, we do, paying off on a starboard tack, have the option of first the jib, because it's got the biggest leverage, the fulcrum, but then maybe the spacer goes up a back too, to help with that balance of resistance against the power of the main to weather vane the vessel. Sure. Um, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of insight into uh, what happens when we haul back. So let's get some crew up forward and ready the windlass to haul back. Uh, make sure that we get the spurling pipe cover off and chain ready to run. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys uh, our windlass. And everything on the boat is run by people power, uh, including this lovely cast contraption up here. I'm going to go around the other way. Let's pull that chain up so it can feed down into the deck. So this windlass has uh, drums on either side, port and starboard, uh, and you can see those arms sticking out of the top. Uh, so we divide the crew into two groups of people and it cranks up and down. Uh, so if you guys want to start cranking around. And that's well. That's well. So as you can see, it's not a very quick process. Uh, all in all, it takes about 15 minutes to, to haul back if we have one shot of chain out. How much is one shot of chain, Cap? 90 feet. 90 feet? Yeah. Sometimes we'll have more. Uh, what would be a scenario that we'd have more chain out? When we want the, um, the, uh, uh, the ratio to be greater than 5. So for depth of water, we're in roughly 20 feet of water, but we have very light conditions. So we're more four to one mm. right now. Um, but with light conditions, that chain is hanging down and then going across the bottom. Uh, if we had stronger wind at the same depth, then we'd lay out more because we ne we don't want to have a situation where the chain straightens out and starts to lift the anchor from the bottom uh, in the terms of angular lift. So uh, uh, we have a limit for the amount of wind so at 20 feet of water, if it was blowing 60, 60 knots, we'd have to have two anchors out. And it's sure. quite, quite possible that won't be enough because the amount of wind that you have. And then when you combine high wind, like 20, 30, 35, gusting 40, with a sea, you get that problem. So uh, in our case, it's very sublime right now. Yeah. Uh, so that's the plan for us today is we're gonna we're gonna haul back We're gonna stretch out a bunch more sail uh, and we're gonna educate all the new folks and remind all of the old folks uh, About how to sail the boat. Uh, Captain Miles. Do you have any parting words for us this morning? Always stay diligent everyone <laughs>